Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies. And today we're gonna to be talking about all the best stuff just recently added to HBO Max. So for this video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Normally, I put the list together, I talk about specific movies, maybe it's just 10 or 20, but in this list, we're going to scroll through the entire just added section of HBO Max, and I'm going to point out all the best movies that they just added, which is going to be some familiar favorites, as well as some hidden gems you've probably never seen, and we're going to go in order of the way they have them displayed. HBO Max, I think, has the best just added section, while other channels try to do it a little bit, HBO Max just dumps all the newest stuff in one tab. It's right here. Let's go ahead and scroll through and I'm going to point out some of the best stuff on here right now. So right off the bat, Crazy Stupid Love I think is a fantastic romantic comedy for a couple of reasons, but the big one is it doesn't feel like other romantic comedies. This one's actually got some heavy drama elements to it, as well as some light, fun stuff. It also feels really grounded, mainly because you're getting such great performances from Steve Carell, Julianne Moore, Emma Stone, and Ryan Gosling. All fantastic actors, and they're doing a great job with a really great story that feels like it kind of hits close to home. So if you generally don't watch romantic comedies because you just feel like you're watching the same thing. Crazy Stupid Love does stand out as an exceptional movie. On a similar note, you also get Steve Carell in The Incredible Burt Wonderstone. Not one of my favorite movies of his, but it is that silly sort of Will Ferrell brand of comedy. And you also get a really great role from Steve Buscemi. He's not in the movie nearly enough, but then you also get a really fantastic role from Jim Carrey where he's playing this David Blaine kind of magician. Very different thing than you normally see him do, and I thought it was a really great fit for him because he's not really the star of the movie, but it was cool to see him play this character. So again, not my favorite pick on this list by any means, but certainly better than I remember it being. And then right next to that, we've got The Truman Show. I'm not gonna labor that, mainly because I've talked about it on the channel recently, but just an absolute gem of a movie that if it's been a while since you've rewatched it, I guarantee you forgot how good this movie actually is. And I could say the same thing about The X-Files. It's right next to it on the list. This is a fantastic movie that I think stands out on its own from the series. Now, I know a lot of stuff from the series ties in. In fact, this movie really answers some questions from kind of the main storyline that would go through The X-Files, but they did it in such a way that I really feel like you can watch this movie on its own, completely separate from the series. It lacks a little bit of the character development because the movie assumes you know some of these characters already, but it's got a really interesting concept on sort of an alien invasion that's very different from other alien invasion movies. And it's got some great sequences to it that look top notch, top tier stuff that again, I think still holds up pretty well today. We scroll down just a little bit and we get Breakdown, which I think is a fantastic Kurt Russell thriller. Kurt Russell has always been one of my favorite actors and Breakdown is not one of my favorite movies of his, but it is a total gem. In this movie, him and his wife have a breakdown out in the desert and a trucker offers to take her to call for help and then she is never seen again. And he really goes on a tear looking for his wife and what's so great about Breakdown is he plays a completely average guy. He's got no special skills or anything like that. He's just determined to find his wife and it makes for some really great sequences and the movie escalates. The action in this movie escalates way beyond what you would expect it to. I mean, it gets a little far fetched and it gets a little bit out there, but in general, it stays fairly grounded, which just works really well for me. Days of Thunder is a really fun Tom Cruise movie. It's like a serious version of Talladega Nights. If you love Talladega Nights or you love racing of any capacity, this is a good movie. But even if you have no interest in NASCAR, this is still a really cool look at this world. It's got a lot in common with movies like Any Given Sunday, where it's showing sort of the fast paced nature of sports. So for that, this movie does stand out pretty well. You also get a really great role from Michael Michael Rooker. I mean, that guy has come into his own today. He's more famous now than he ever has been, but it's always cool to see him in some of the 80s roles that he did such a good job in as well. And then No Country for Old Men. It's one of my favorite movies. I've talked about it enough on this channel. I don't think there's anybody watching this video that needs me to talk about No Country for Old Men, but certainly among the better things recently added to HBO Max. Ah, rubber. I do need to talk about this one. So this is not only one of the weirdest things they just added to HBO Max, it's one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. 
let that sink in a little bit. If you're a longtime subscriber, you know I watch a lot of weird movies, which means for something to stand out as one of the weirdest I've ever seen, it's really gotta be something special, right? So Rubber is about a murderous rubber tire. That's about all you need to know. If that does not hook you or interest you in the movie, then I can tell you there's nothing else about this movie that's really gonna interest you. This is just wild, weird, satirical stuff that manages to work if you can wrap your head around the concept from the get-go. If you never get into the concept on this one, trust me, you're never gonna get into the movie. Troll Hunter is a total gem that I've mentioned on this channel a bunch of times. I love recommending this movie. It is foreign language, you are gonna have subtitles, but this follows a group of people hunting down trolls that they believe to really exist. And no, these aren't crazy haired little trolls with gemstones for belly buttons. These are gigantic ogre-like trolls. Some of them live under bridges, some live in caves, but there's wild fantasy stuff in this movie, but it's filmed kind of like the Blair Witch Project. It adds the sense of realism, yet the movie doesn't ever take itself too seriously. It's got a fantastic tone to it. If you generally like movies like this, Troll Hunter is a total gem. Oh, they also added the Wolf Pack, which is one of my favorite documentaries to recommend for movie lovers because it is about the love of movies. What it's really about, though, is this group of Hare Krishna boys that were raised in this tiny New York apartment where they were really never allowed to leave. And as heartbreaking as that sounds, and it is in the documentary, it really focuses a lot on how they focused on movies. They couldn't go out and experience the world, which again, really sad stuff, but they fell in love with movies and they made their own costumes and they filmed their own movies and really developed this incredible passion for movies as a result. And the documentary does a great job of capturing that. So if you have a passion for movies the way that I do, then this makes for a really fantastic watch. 8-Bit Christmas is actually an HBO Max original that just released. This is essentially a retelling of the classic A Christmas Story movie. But instead of a Red Ryder BB gun, a young boy wants a Nintendo NES system. This is great for people of my generation that grew up in the 80s. A lot of nostalgia with this one. Not nearly as good of a movie as A Christmas Story, which is also on HBO Max right now, but for something new and updated, it was a fun watch, and even though it's very close to A Christmas Story, it did enough things different enough to make it feel fresh enough for me, really, as an HBO Max original. The Lawnmower Man. It's been a while since I've seen this one. This is actually based on a book by Stephen King, and it's this really wild sci-fi movie. It does have a little bit in common with Flowers for Algernon. There's a couple of other stories that kind of follow this same path where someone that's mentally deficient takes some sort of drug, or in this case is hooked up to this supercomputer, and they gain intelligence, but the lawnmower man goes into a very dark direction as that happens. You've got some really outdated visual effects with this, some early CGI. In fact, a lot of the CGI you see in this movie was outdated almost as soon as it came out, because this came out the same year as Jurassic Park, but you do get this really great Stephen King sci-fi thing as well. It's far from the best recommendation I'm giving you in this video, but if you've never seen it and you like kind of crazy wild stuff like that, this is a fun little watch from the 90s. Looks like they just added seven. I think this is my favorite David Fincher movie. David Fincher is one of my favorite directors. I'm talking like top three probably. And I love Fight Club. I love everything that he's done. But I think seven edges all of them out. Mainly because it's just perfect. Like I've watched this movie so many times. The twist is perfect. Even when you know what it is, it still reveals itself perfectly. The way that it's paced out is fantastic. The look of it is incredible. This movie came out in the mid 90s. It still looks like it was filmed yesterday. Just the quality of the, the filmmaking here is just top notch stuff. And then the story is revealed to you in this really excellent way. But the vibe it puts off is really unlike anything else. People have tried to imitate it, but they've not really come as close as this one got to just this amazing brooding nature. Everybody's great in it. Brad Pitt's great. Morgan Freeman's great. Gwyneth Paltrow. Never really been a fan of hers. She's particularly good here. So all around, just I think one of the best movies ever made. Certainly in its genre, it's one of the best, if not the best. The Wedding Singer, it stands out to me as one of my favorite Adam Sandler movies. I mean, really, Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore get put up as the top two. His first two are really still his best, but The Wedding Singer is in a close third place for me. Best man, everybody. Best man. The better man. 
They also added the interview with the vampire and Blade 2. Two fantastic vampire movies. In fact, maybe two of my favorites. Interview with the Vampire is just a great adaptation of Anne Rice's work, which gives you this big sweeping historical thing about these vampires that feels real. All the history that gets wrapped up in it makes it feel like something that could have really happened, and you feel like you're watching almost like a historical account of these vampire characters. And then Blade 2 is just on the opposite end of the spectrum as just wild, colorful action movie with a lot of blood and monsters. This is actually directed by Guillermo del Toro, who I think is one of the best directors to do that genre, that over-the-top horror genre. I can't wait to see his new movie, but I consider Blade 2 to easily be the best of the Blade series because Del Toro did such an amazing job with this movie. They added Deep Blue Sea, which is a fun shark movie. I don't highly recommend that movie, but it's got its fun moments, and it has some practical effects that are pretty exceptional. Well, I don't really recommend Shark Night, they also just added that recently, and these two could make for a fun double feature. Shark Night is in no way a good movie, but it could be a fun, bloody watch if you know how to have fun with that type of a movie. Dragged Across Concrete is another hidden gem I love to recommend. Mel Gibson and Vince Vaughn both star in this, and they are fantastic stick together but you got a great but short-lived role from Don Johnson. Michael Jai White pops up for a little bit, and then Tori Kittles kind of plays like the secondary character. He does a great job. I was the least familiar with him going into this movie, and then I kind of like to see him in other things after having seen this. Now, this is actually from the same director as Bone Tomahawk and Brawl and Cell Block 99. And while I think I like both of those movies better, it's not by much. Dragged Across Concrete is a really cool flick, and I would say I compared this movie a lot to Quentin Tarantino's movies. However, it doesn't have the same flavor. To me, this feels like the true story of something that could have happened that Quentin Tarantino would then take and sort of hyper-realize and put his stamp on it. I know that's a weird way to describe it, but it's got this kind of close kinship with the Tarantino universe while feeling much more like it takes place in our world rather than this hyper-realized sort of movie world that Tarantino does. Again, I don't know why I took such a weird explanation and made it longer, but I think when you watch it, some of you will understand what I'm talking about. Changing Lanes is actually a pretty fantastic thriller starring Ben Affleck and Samuel L. Jackson. This one actually revolves around a car accident, and while that sounds kind of dry and lame, there is a dryness to it, but considering that like the world isn't in peril or anything in this movie, there are a lot of pretty high stakes. It just feels a little bit confined to this smaller world of these two characters, but that said, it delivers as a really fantastic thriller. You just need to have the right expectations for it. And then I ranted about Quentin Tarantino and they have Jackie Brown. Far from my favorite Tarantino movie, but still one that I absolutely love. This one stands out in his filmography to me as being one of his more realistic, toned movies, yet it's still got this incredible Tarantino vibe to it. You get the great dialogue, and while it's not as colorful as the dialogue can be in some of his other work, the characters are pretty rich. And not only are the characters rich, but this movie's got just an incredible cast to it. So mega balls on Quentin Tarantino for putting Pam Greer at the lead of his next big movie after Pulp Fiction. I know she had a cult following, but for mass audiences, for her to be the lead, that took some balls, and she delivers, she does a killer job in this. He also resurrected Robert Forrester, who only just recently died, and went on to do a bunch of movies after this. He plays the Bell of Bondsman. He is killer. You get an amazing but short-lived role from Chris Tucker in this as well. Obviously Samuel L. Jackson's great, but then you get a pretty good Robert De Niro. It's the only time he's appeared in a Quentin Tarantino movie, and he's very different from what he normally plays. I mean, I know he's kind of a gangster type, but he's pretty tight-lipped, which is unusual not only for De Niro, but also for Quentin Tarantino to write such a tight-lipped character. I'm gushing about this one, but there's so many great elements. Michael Keaton has a really fantastic role. I mean. I love this movie. Again, it's far from my favorite Tarantino movie, but still, just a total gem of a movie, and if it's been a while since you've seen it, you've probably forgot how cool this movie is. Speaking of double features, this and Dragged Across Concrete, even though it would be a long double feature, it would make for a killer double feature. So, ton of great stuff on HBO Max right now, and obviously, as I was scrolling through, you probably saw a lot of other movies you recognize that I could easily talk about, but those are the ones I wanted to talk about today. Let me know if there's any additional gems hiding out 
on streaming platforms out there that I need to know about and that I need to tell my viewers about. Speaking of my viewers, if you go down to the comments and help me thank the Patreon supporters, I would personally appreciate it because I appreciate all the support that they've been giving me over the years. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter and seeing your name here at the end of every video, there's a link in the video description. By the way, all the movies I've talked about, there's a list of them in the top pinned comment down below. Just scroll down there, do a screen grab with your phone, and you've got a full list of movies the next time you're looking for something to watch. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special HBO Max episode, and you will see me on the next one.